Tom here from Learn Systems. What you need to know about the latest Zoom vulnerabilities. Don't worry, there's not that many of them right now. As of April 7th, who knows? I can't predict the future, but at least we'll cover what I know right now and talk about the Zoom product. If you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button up at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's some affiliate links down below that get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And we'll start with this headline. The first one is Zoom leaking data. So Rapid7 put this up and I kind of like how they worded this, the gossip, the reporting and what happened. I'm not gonna read the entirety of this, but I'm gonna run over the big ones. Zoom leaking data to Facebook. They use a software development kit from Facebook. They did stop using it, but that's SDK did send some data to Facebook even when you weren't using Facebook because the login with Facebook feature uh, would pull some data and they were gonna probably pull whether or not you were logged into Facebook already so they could just use your OAuth token and verify it, et cetera. Um, it didn't seem like that big of a deal. I don't consider Zoom a privacy-based application, uh, but they did fix it. Zoom and end-end encryption. Okay, end-end encryption. What I think it means and what people in marketing think it means. It's a great comfort feeling to think that we're end-to-end -end encrypted. I think end-end encryption means from my device to the person I'm speaking with's device. Their marketing team thinks end-to-end -end encryption means from their device to their server. And they do encrypt it from the device, my device here, what I'm recording on to their servers, then it can be decrypted at the Zoom level. So the Zoom servers have access to your data and they encrypt it again before it goes to the other person. So nobody in between, not my ISP or any other computers local to my network are able to decrypt the data easily, you know, because it seems to be pretty strong encryption. We'll get to that down below. But uh, for the most part, yes, Zoom themselves can decrypt it. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, that's one more step in the path. This one was kind of a minor one, but it got fixed, but it's worth noting. What about these UNC pass and problems with it? Well, yeah, Zoom lets attackers steal passwords and window credentials. Great headline. I did tweet it out um, and I think it's relevant, but it was fixed relatively quickly. And it's just basically they weren't sanitizing the inputs uh, for things you could dump in there and you could possibly exploit UNC pass. Not going to dive too deep into the technical details of it, but because it's fixed anyways, but you can read it in this blog post. This was just silly. Zoom in the OS X interface. Yes, they did some strange things, including the dialog box that says system needs your privilege to change instead of saying something like Zoom needs your password to update the application. Yes, that's weird in terms of wording. Perhaps someone who doesn't speak native English wrote that or some developer that thought that was a funny way to word it. I don't know the details, but you know, this is little things that they did fix. The other thing they did was they said, well, they're using UX hacks to get access to the webcam. No, they're trying to get as few clicks as possible so end users don't drive them crazy with support calls. Trust me, I get this from someone who's dealt with a lot of end user support. So was it the best choice to do these UX hacks per se that are used by, well, less savory applications? Uh, probably not the best idea, but it also removed some of the tech support from it. So they didn't have malicious intent, even though they had a way of doing it that seemed malicious. And this just gave permission to the webcam easier. Well, because no one wants a phone call about how do I get my webcam working with Zoom and creating all the technical support challenge of that. These local privilege escalations, which have been fixed uh, relatively fast, this was kind of weird. I don't like the way they worded it and I don't like the way it was handled. So ex-NSA hacker, tell me everything starts with ex-NSA hacker. That's a great headline, right? Um, but this person who is a truly good security researcher, uh, he's covered some findings and dropped them over on Objective C, which is a blog, uh, but by dropping them, didn't appear to contact Zoom, according to the Rapid7 research they did here. Uh, those have been fixed, but they were just basically some um, different ways Zoom handled things and not the best way. So it was a potential problem uh, for people also running on your computer and taking over by using some of the privileged tools inside of Zoom, but they still had access, have to have access to your computer to make this happen. Zoom, China encryption and more snafus. Back to what I said about Zoom not being truly and then encrypted. That means it pit stops at the Zoom server level and they're able to decode it there. And what about China? This was a popular comment on my other Zoom video. Yes, they have servers uh, that they do some development in China. The servers I pointed out in my video uh, were here in the US, but either way, whether it's US or China, um, China has their own government with uh, different policies and we have policies here for FISA warrants and subpoenas. Because it's not end-to-end -end encrypted, yes, they're subject to the laws of the land by which they reside. 
So what that means is if you have a uh, something you're worried about, state level secrets that you have to work in because you are a security contractor, whichever, you know, some government title you may have, Zoom may not be the best thing for you to use if you're worried about such things. Uh, whether you're a European user, whether or not you're an American user, please note it is subject to not only like the FISA warrants here in the U.S. with subpoenas and FBI and other U.S. agencies, any other nation state that cooperates directly with the U.S. So if there's some other sting operations going on and they are cooperating with the FBI, the FBI could, because of the laws of the land here, where many of the servers provide, also gain access to it. Um, anytime you're not using an encryption, this is just something you need to think about. Um, maybe this doesn't matter if you're just doing your Zoom happy hour and doing a toast to your friends. It's probably great. Uh, if you're working on something of national security levels and you uh, want to have that discussion, Zoom's probably not the thing to do that with. If you have lots of company trade secrets and you're worried about uh, spying by third-party companies that may steal those secrets, don't use Zoom. Uh, that's probably not a good idea. So if you uh, are wanting to really lock that down and you're a business running your own servers uh, for messaging makes a lot more sense. I know uh, someone had commented Zoom has some commercial stuff available. I've also talked to before. I mentioned this in another video, Jitsi. Uh, Chris from Crosstalk just did a video on how to get that stood up. If you want something where you are in control, then go ahead and set something up where you're in control and the servers don't rely on these third parties and that's how you get around some of that where you go, well, I don't want someone pit stopping on this server or listening in on it because the reality, the other side of this, if any bad actors get a hold of Zoom servers and get within their uh, system, all the information will become public as well. So that's uh, something else to think about it. And there's a few other uh, posts on here and a few other details, but nothing really relevant from that. So it's just some more headline debunking, so to speak, and giving you the real details behind there. So my overall opinion, as long as you're not trying to uh, do something of national security level, uh, or require uh, state secrets or have some top secret information to share or uh, proprietary secrets that you worry some other country could potentially tap into. Um, if you're not any of those categories, uh, then Zoom's okay to use. It's probably really good for end user and things like that. There's been a lot of other talk about a few things that aren't exactly vulnerabilities, but where they found recordings of Zoom or people jumping in Zoom meetings. Zoom has done a great job of updating all the defaults to help mitigate some of those problems because not putting passwords on Zooms and only having a, a short number of digits that people could guess obviously creates a a problem and people just jumping into a, your conferencing call unannounced and uh, maybe not for the best reasons because, well, you know, jumping in on someone's phone call to insert something else is uh, funny to many people that do things for the lulls. So uh, those things should be looked at. You should take the time to look at how to secure Zoom. It's really easy to do. And most of the defaults have been updated um, since the last video I did to include most of those security defaults. So uh, Zoom's come a lot way for that. And as far as like finding these videos, yes, you can see the little button when people are recording the video and people are accidentally leaving these open, publishing them to Dropbox, publishing them to different cloud hosting without any security. There's also always the chance that when you have a group conference call going that someone's simply recording the screen and uh, eventually could that data can get out as well. So those are all things to consider when you're you know, using any of these tools. So always be conscious of it. I always kind of comment in my thought processes. If I'm having a conversation on a platform like Zoom, I think of it as a conversation at the park. I don't see anyone next to me really listening, but that person on the bench over there might be listening. So I come at it from that perspective. I think about that and very conscious about what I'd say on there. And if I really want to have a private conversation off the record, you have to use something that's using an, an encryption if you really want to uh, lock it down, which is a lot harder but Zoom makes it a lot easier, so you're going to see a lot of average end users using it. And if you just want to, you know, do webinars and talk about security and things like that and have general conversations with people, which I have had on Zoom a lot and a lot of the podcasts I've done and a lot of the uh, interviews I've done have been on Zoom, I think it's a great tool for things like that, especially because most of that information ends up public anyways. So I'm not saying not to use it. I'm saying think about the use case to use it. Also, if you're 100% privacy oriented and don't want to be tracked online or anything like that, and Zoom may not be for you either. Yes, they're going to try to collect data about you. Uh, giving them the middle amount of data mm -hmm. is going to be the best solution for that. But, you know, use everything with caution. Keep an open mind on all of it. And uh, I'll leave this link to Rapid7 so you can dive into all the details. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. 
If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.